Hello everybody and welcome again. Uh, today uh, we're going to try something a little bit different. I have been working a little bit out off screen and I want to share with you a little bit of the things that I've been trying out. So I've been messing around with the UI. There are, there's been some issues in how sometimes it seems to work fine and sometimes it doesn't and it's not very clear to me why the, the UI helpers here aren't always working. This is basically a copy of the debug UI scene that comes from the with the regular uh, Oculus SDK sample framework, and for whatever reason, the even though it has the exact same setup, uh, the the UI helpers weren't working properly in the previous scene that we were working on, um, but they seem to be working fine here. Um, and because everything is prefabbed, and really there's very few things that should be scene dependent, you can just move on and set up the UI here, uh, and we'll go back to crafting the whole scene and putting the whole scene back together later. For now, I want to focus a, a little bit on the UI. You, you can already see here kind of the finished product. A lot of this is uh, still simply the, the UI uh, elements and events. There's not a lot of logic behind this, um, but we'll get to that. Uh, so let's start by looking at this uh, at this brief. Have everything else you've pretty much seen before even the, the UI helpers while we were going through that, this pretty much the same um, UI helpers uh, prefab that we had before, except that for this one here, well, actually here I haven't updated, but yeah, you can uh, set up in the, uh, oh yeah, I, I updated here. You, you can set up the laser pointed behavior. So I added this. Um, but other than that, this is pretty much the same debug UI um, scene and only the cell canvas here um, really matters. So let's open the prefab and go directly into this. Um, so you can see how, uh, here how, how it looks. Uh, it consists of three different panels. Uh, the important one is here, the in inventory panel. Uh, you, can, uh, you can see here uh, below, I have the cell panel. This uh, basically will display uh, how much will the items uh, selected uh, sell for. And then you have here a simple header. Uh, for now, this is all very prototypey. I'm sure there's a, <laughs> something better to put here other than sell items. Uh, we can uh, populate here with a merchant name, for example, something like that. Of course, we still haven't seen other merchant interactions. So if we want to buy items here, uh, we'll need to flip this around. And there's a, a whole number of uh, choices that we haven't made here. But for now, that's not important. We can uh, ignore a little bit the header here. Uh, we can uh, ignore the cell panel for now and just uh, jump into the big inventory panel. So the, the inventory panel works as follows. Here we have uh, just a regular panel with a nice sliced uh, background here. Uh, if you haven't worked with uh, to this price before, uh, when you come here uh, to, to, uh, to, to the sprite, Whenever you import into your project, you say there's a your sprite. Here now in the editor, you can set up how to slice it. For this kind of UI, you should just cut out the rounded corners um, so that the aspect here is preserved. And then these parts uh, here in the top left, uh, right and bottom, they get stretched a little bit. And the thing that gets stretched the most is um, the center part here, which tends to work very well uh, with this kind of design. So you have a, a sliced frame here for the background and not, not much else. We, uh, we have a grid layout group here. Um, you can, uh, well, you probably cannot see now, but this basically um, defines how the children element here are gonna be laid out. So you could change a few things here. For example, if I wanna say, hey, I need four columns, or eight. Uh, this basically figures out how to do that. For now, I just set uh, the right area for it with the right padding, and, and uh, you can set, uh, set the size of the element. So if I make this 100, you can see this changes. Uh, and then you can add spacing here between the elements. So if you have it at 10, if I have it at 20, uh, or, you know, at uh, 60, 
it kind of figures out uh, whatever uh, layout this can fit. So that's that's on the on the laying out part of of the frame here. Other than that, um, this panel is pretty much just a container. What really matters here is uh, this uh, inventory slot prefab, and you can see here in the prefabs, uh, I have it here as an inventory slot. At the top level, this is uh, just a transform here. Actually, uh, it could have been a panel. Uh, originally, it was a button, but I removed all the components. So now it's just a canvas renderer with uh, this inventory slot script. Uh, we saw it before, but it's a pretty straightforward class. It just <laughs> defines uh, the name and the price. Later on here, we can add a, a sprite. For example, if we want to show uh, an icon for the for the item, so need to figure that one out later. Um, one thing that I wanted to try was to add uh, a 3D model to the UI, but the way that this uh, uh, the UI works in Unity. It would it was breaking a lot of things, so I had to um, to let that go for now. But that's that's what we have here. And then uh, here uh, is where it gets interesting. Um, the the way the way that uh, we're using this is that uh, this is in toggle, so we can actually select several items uh, at a time uh, to sell. Um, so we don't, we don't sell one by one. We can choose. Uh, you know which ones we want to sell so we use this toggle ui element here and this has an interactable here to turn it on and off uh, if we don't want uh, the user to be able to select this specific slot we turn this off which helps when we have uh, this is a 20 20 item screen if we only have three items we don't need to have the rest enabled so we will turn them off at that point and then here's some configuration you can have and how uh, the toggle looks when it's being interacted with um, and then this has uh, the selection here is it on or off you can see here when it gets selected uh, it changes to this image which is actually this image here it's not uh, showing up here um, but uh, basically it's the same button style with a different colors you can see it here um, and then you can uh, set up a transition here and you can set it to fade. Uh, I tried it before with fade and it didn't look quite right. So I decided not to use it. Uh, then here you have the target uh, graphic, which is basically which graphic you will switch to when this is selected. Uh, so I have this unselected toggle then this selected toggle. Uh, we flip to the selected toggle here. Um, when, when it's on, it's true. Uh, and then you can set up a group if you want to only be able to select one out of a group kind of use it to more like a radio button but um, yeah that doesn't uh, really apply here because we want to be able to select everything here and finally i have something here um, that if you saw here we have the cell ui script at the top um, where we are for now kind of uh, coding this in we will probably uh, swap this at runtime as needed we have the inventory that we're drawing from, which is for now the player inventory, the buyer uh, who's gonna handle the transaction. Um, this contain, contains the price table for setting the price for the items, and it has a multiplier in case the merchant is more expensive than other merchants or you know offering lower prices than other merchants. Uh, and then here uh, we also have the sales, the sale price, which is gonna this updatable text uh, scriptable object uh, is going to be used to update the text here at the bottom of the UI, but we'll get to that a little bit later. We have that here, and uh, we have on on value change here. So whenever we toggle this on and off, we're triggering a method here in the cell UI that is on toggle update, and we will check that uh, soon. Actually, we can go through that. Um, there's not that many changes for the the cell UI uh, here uh, I added the cell text that you saw before uh, so this is what we're going to be using to update the text uh, here and then we have a couple of uh, arrays here one is for the inventory slots themselves then one is for the labels that they have um, we didn't see that uh, but there's an actual label here it's a pretty straightforward text mesh pro uh, element here so that's that's just collected here. 
uh, in the labels and then we have the actual toggle uh, UI element here as an array. Technically, we could probably create a class that wraps these uh, three things into one to make things uh, easier a little bit further ahead, but that can be a refactor that we do later. Then this, this we had set up before, which is just a single uh, time flag that we use to basically figure out uh, the UI elements here. So this thing that's happening in the setup, uh, you know, actually populating the children here, populating the labels and the slots, uh, and then initializing them in the beginning. I don't think that we're going to be doing that more than once. Initially, like I don't, I don't expect uh, to be adding uh, slots later on. If needed, we could reset this later. And technically, if we have a way to, to set this to false again later on, whenever the UI is enabled again, this would repopulate. But for now, it's only happening once on enable. Uh, and then uh, I added some state here to keep track of the sale price. And this will get updated uh, later on, you'll see. Uh, so yeah, when the component's enabled, if it's not set up, we set it up and then we update the UI. This got a little bit more complex now. Well, Extract a few variables here, just uh, the items from the inventory state and the count, uh, which we'll be using uh, a lot here. So I want to not be, uh, you know, looking for for these elements every time. Um, and then for all the slots, we see if we don't have enough items in the inventory. Basically, we run out of items in the inventory before we run out of slots, um, which for now, we're not targeting the case where we have more than 20 items in the inventory. That will probably come uh, later in some form of pagination. For now, we're just, we're just tracking uh, 20. So if we have less than 20 items uh, in the inventory for for those slots that are you know after however many items we have, uh, we simply set them as uh, interactable false, uh, which means that we're not going to be able to interact with that uh, slot. Uh, we set the label to nothing. And uh, yeah, we don't need this one anymore. Uh, I'm actually gonna remove this. But this was for debugging. Uh, there was uh, some issue here where I was uh, tracking if the item count was less than I, and I was hitting basically if I had two items when I was uh, two, this uh, would be false and we would be accessing, accessing uh, items here. But since this starts counting from zero, Item two is actually the third item, so it would go uh, have an out of bounds error. Whenever we have items for the slot, then we uh, select the item from the items here. Um, we set uh, the slot uh, name and price that we'll be uh, using in the in the label, and then we set the label to be this item for this price. Basically. Um, and then we set it to false because whenever we're updating the the UI, we're resetting the selection. For the most uh, uh, part, it doesn't really affect anything because usually the UI would be updated kind of in the background. And then we set the interactable to true so that we can actually select the slot. And then we have this other one that you saw we were referencing in the on toggle. We um, we call this on toggle update method. Uh, through the through the editor, you can see it here. Uh, Whenever we change, we run on toggle. Uh, and in here, we basically recalculate the sell, sell price. So we say it's zero, go through the slots, and then if the slot is selected, which is, is on, then we add the item price to the sell price. And then at the end, uh, we're just setting the, the sell text to the sell price here. Uh, so that we actually show that in, in the labels. and. At this point here, whenever we call the, uh, the actual, we trigger the sale uh, by clicking the sell button, we would use that sale price to handle the uh, transaction. Although technically we can also have a list of selected items and uh, do the transaction there. Based on how we set up trade before, we will uh, want to um, do this uh, preview item sale and actually select all the items. and. And set everything up, um, but for now we're not doing that logic. We'll, we'll do that uh, next time. For now, we're just doing the UI. So that's basically it for the cell canvas. There's not that much more to it. It only took uh, a little bit longer uh, because I was messing around with the UI. And the one thing that you uh, saw here is that the sale price itself 
Here, this one has a text updater component, which basically looks into the sale price here and whatever, whenever the sale price is updated, we call this unupdated uh, method here. Uh, yeah, and then that gets set. The one thing that I added is that I added a prefix to the updatable text. So we can define the prefix and then just add uh, text to it. And I'm using this uh, to, to set this dollar sign before uh, the value. Becomes. Technically, I, I could set that up directly in the string when I'm creating it. It's not that much different, but I wanted to have that prefix uh, kind of to simplify some things. To, have a kind of separation of concerns where we can have uh, something that's purely graphical, like this uh, dollar sign doesn't really give much information uh, as a variable um, to the string, but to the user when they see it, it's important to have it there. Um, but that's basically it. Now I'm just gonna quickly turn on the headset. Virtual desktop has been giving me some issues recently. It tends to turn on and off uh, randomly. But then the startup is quick enough that it tends to not matter that much. Now we should have all the things. Um, so it looks, looks tiny from afar. <laughs> but yeah, and as you remember with NVR, for a reason, the first time you load the scene, the ads don't appear. I was the scene, and now the ads appear. The UI helper is turned on by default. Uh, I currently have two logs in my inventory. Uh, so I can see here, hopefully, uh, you can see here, you can uh, select them and uh, deselect them and the sale price updates here, right? So first one is 10, second one is 20, and then if I hit the sell button here, bam, sell button. Uh, for now, the graphics kind of tiny. Uh, I'll, I'll see if it uh, makes sense to make this bigger, maybe. To match kind of this uh, this size, I like this size of text. This one seems a little bit tiny, but I was also thinking that the coin alone may not merely tell people that that's what they need to hit to sell uh, the items. We'll figure out the UI later. For now, I'm kind of enjoying these graphics uh, coming from Open Game Art. <laughs> if you're wondering where that you know, came from, um, so I collect another log here that I haven't seen. And now if I reset the scene, I have three logs in my uh, inventory. You can actually select three of them and bam, bam, and then I have 30 gold to sell. Uh, or I can keep one, 20. Um, it does working. The other, uh, the other slots are disabled because we don't have anything there. Uh, and yeah, this, uh, in this line, this pointer here still looks magenta. It's haven't set up. Material for it, but we'll change that later on. For now, I'm kind of liking how the UI is looking now, which is great. After a while of experimenting, it's kind of taking shape. And with everything prefabbed, it uh, should be easy to just drop that into any, any other uh, scene that we have. And that should just work uh, right out of the gate. The, the cool thing with the descriptable objects is that they get attached to the prefab, and unless we swap them at runtime, it's just gonna use these ones. It's a pretty, it's a pretty cool UI system. Um, it is pretty flexible. We will need to hook up the actual sale later, and that may get tricky um, based on how we've set up things. But overall, it's looking pretty good. Um, so that's it for now. We'll uh, we'll get into wiring the rest of the of the behavior in the next video but for now this is it thank you very much for sticking around and see you in the next one